The Blue Jays took down the Orioles in a series, and because of it, you can take a deep breath. They're going to make the playoffs. It's Locked On Blue Jays, and it starts right now. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Blue Jays, your Monday episode. He's Matt Bonaparte. I'm Ben Schulman. Thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. You can catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, Twitter at Locked on Jays, and you can email us Locked on Blue Jays Real at gmail.com. We want to hear from you as we go down the stretch, but Bones Blue Jays playing really good baseball. They kept that up this weekend. A 2-1 series win over the Orioles. Nearly a series sweep. Uh, And I guess I'll just jump right into my storyline, which is don't let the last game hurt you too much. Uh, The Blue Jays went into the ninth inning, leading 3-2 in the last game of the series. And Jordan Romano had a a rare blown save, uh, his first in over a month. Uh, but at the same time, he's been really good. They were really good. They still won the series, and they still did their job. Uh, They're up six games now on the Orioles. There's like somewhere between 16 to 18 to play for pretty much every team, Uh, and a comeback from a six-game deficit against the Blue Jays doesn't seem likely. I mean, the Orioles are still only, I think, four out of a wild-card spot, so They might be able to get into the playoffs, but it doesn't feel like catching the Blue Jays is very attainable for them anymore. So because of that, you did the job. Don't get too sad about it. It would have been cool to sweep, but you did a really good job winning the first two, and you should be proud of yourselves, Blue Jays. I agree. Um, It was a bad series from my hype train, Rugnet Odor, but that's okay. That's kind of what we wanted. Uh, I thought at least he'd like try to like switch out somebody's equipment or like stop the bus or something or like slash somebody's tires, but he didn't. He he played clean, and that's what you got to respect about Rugnet Odor. He was not good. Um, Terrible. <laughs> he, was, he was actually <laughs> he's borderline my MVP for this series. He was actually pretty good at second base, but he was not good at the plate. Um, my scary was Ryan Mountcastle, who ended up getting injured. Uh, so hope he's okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, Adley Rushman, really good, like really good, uh, and delivered the big hit at the end. Kind of burns that they somewhat won the last game because of Jesus Aguilar. Um, he hit a home run and then knocked in an insurance run, and they ended up winning 5-4, and it's like, ah, well. Uh, but, you know, George Springer nearly hits a home run to tie the game in the bottom of the ninth, misses by like three feet and still doubles in a run. So it's all right. You lose it sometimes. Who is your series MVP? It's not Root Ned Odor, I'm assuming. I'm going, uh, I'm going Matt Chapman. Um, I, I mean, when you hit two tanks in a ball game, you kind of get me. Um, I heard your call on one of them was fantastic. I was like, that's my boy. Um, Chapman was awesome. Yeah, he was really good. He didn't get a hit in the third game, but, you know, we're only going to focus on the wins right now. He was fantastic in game one. Game two, he knocked in a run. He he was good. I like Chapman. Yeah, he was big in the wins. And obviously game one, I mean, those all five uh, scoring plays for both sides were homers. So they needed the Matt Chapman power there. They got the Matt Chapman power. That was really cool. I have a a very unconventional MVP. It's going to be a first-time MVP. Are you ready for this? I'm pumped about it, actually. The MVP for me is Trevor Richards. What? You're saying, why? Why? Two reasons. Um, His two appearances. So the day before the series, Richards throws 29 pitches and gets touched up by Tampa. And you're like, all right, well, he can't be the opener the next day for the bullpen day. He just threw 29 pitches and didn't pitch well. Comes out, strikes out the side to begin game one of the series. Strikes out Mullins, Rushman, Santander. Uh, P. Walker said that was like the spark the pitching staff and the whole team needed to believe that they could go out and win that bullpen game. 
And then in game uh, three of the series, when their bullpen's a little taxed, they used him in the seventh inning against the top of the order again. And again, just pitching around a walk, uh, he retires everyone that he needs to. So uh, he was really good in some tough spots. And the bullpen in general until right at the last moment was really good in this series. Uh, so I decided Trevor Richards has earned his uh, his first MVP of the season coming up clutch. Uh, they need the bullpen games to work at least once or twice more this season. Uh, and they did. So congrats to him. Yeah, man. Yusha Kikuchi got a he got a win in that game, which is yeah, I, uh, those 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 don't come very often. Uh, it's cause he, so you got to be happy about those. Oh, Ben is frozen. He, he gave up frozen. Runs, oh, but he did. He's slowly away. coming back to life. It's because he what, Ben? It's because he gave up runs. That's why he got away. <laughs> Accurate statement. Yeah. Um. Well, good for him. What's your storyline, man? Uh, I believe I already said my storyline, but I might have skipped getting to your storyline. Mine was, what was the yours. Third, the third game shouldn't make them sad that they're all right with oh, the yeah. series win. But I messed that up. So what's your storyline? <laughs> It's okay. Uh, my storyline is that this has been the epitome of a wild card battle in that not too long ago, the Jays were at the bottom of the wild card teams. It was like Seattle, Tampa, Toronto. Now it Toronto's on top. Seattle's at the bottom. Uh, but they've done a really good job of, of, you know, fending off other teams and whatnot. And, and this sweep or not, excuse me, this win uh, series winner of, Baltimore is really going to help that and momentum as well uh, going towards the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, before the Sunday game, they had so much momentum too, because at that point the Yankees had lost twice in a row. They were four and a half back of the division. Uh, division looks a little far-fetched now, but yeah, the wild card flipping and flopping all over the place. And uh, I think it, it seems like they really want that top spot. I know that people have talked about, could you play the AL central? Uh, if you finished in the bottom spot, but I think a lot of people have looked ahead. If you end up winning your first round and seeing that if you get the home field, you play the Yankees, which is a plus for most people. And if you get the sixth seed or the third wild card spot and you beat the AL central in the first round, you play the Astros, which you do not want to do. So, yeah, it uh, seems like the Astros are just like clear cut the best team. The AL. Oh, I mean, it's not even close. Oh, it's yeah. just like, the Yankees have slowed down so much that it, it would have to be like you'd have to see a crazy performance from one of the wild card teams. It would, I mean, it would be remarkable if someone knocks off the Astros, frankly, before the World Series. Almost anyone, even if the Yankees did it. Um, but you're right, they're in a good spot. Uh, and we're gonna see if they can keep it going, and maybe you can make some extra coin off of it by going to our friends at betonline.net, your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest. He's football gone. league developments, oh. game matchups, news and control your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Uh, the fastest and easiest way to check out all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, and boxing and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. And we back. Uh, okay, so if you were listening around the All-Star break, you would know that we did some full-year fictional betting lines. Uh, we're going to revisit those today as the season is slowly coming to an end here. Uh, ben, I believe, was the only person who took these lines. I don't think I gave an answer on them. If I did, I don't remember what I said. So we're going to revisit them and see how uh, how we're living here. First one from that All-Star break trio of episodes. This was, uh, I think this was episode one. Um, or maybe it wasn't. I don't remember. Yeah, anyway. I'm not sure. It was okay. First one, Vladimir Guerrero over under 34 and a half home runs on the season. What did you say? Over, believe I took the over. Um, He's currently at 29, which he, it could happen, it could happen, looking. but it likely will not. 
Yeah, uh, so the Blue Jays have what? They're 83 and 64. So they have 15 games remaining for him to hit six homers. Um, unlikely. He has hit two in the past five games, which is that 40% rate that I need, six and 15. But uh, if I had to guess, I would say probably not. Felt like, you know, Vladdy got pretty hot at one point in the middle of the year. I think we must have picked around then. Um, yeah, he was pretty hot around all-star break times. And so I thought maybe this guy's going to pull off a crazy power surge. Hasn't really happened. Even in his best moments this year, it's been a lot more doubles. Yeah. 34 doubles on the year compared to 29 homers. Um, so probably not going to hit that one. All right. Well, second line, Blue Jays team over under home runs, 200 and a half. They were on pace at the time for 203. Yeah, and I believe, again, I took the over. I, I think this was one I was most unsure about. Um, just team homers is not something I track all that often, but – uh, with Tay Oscar kind of having track been, team homers, can you imagine? <laughs> uh, with Tay Oscar having been hurt uh, at the early part of the year, I, and Jansen having been hurt and on a crazy pace, I think I, I thought that they would, you know, keep the pace going, if not up the pace as they got into the second half, uh, and that hasn't totally panned out. <laughs> this is an accurate statement. Uh, they are currently at what? 177 so i mean they're not horrifically off pace let me do the let me they would have to hit quick math they hit 1.2 a game they need 23 in the next um in the next 15 games there's no so chance the, to hit 23 in 15 games they're on pace to hit 195 they're on pace to hit 18 in the next 15 games yeah but 23 that would be crazy they'd have to like Multiple players would have to have multi home run games, right? No, just as a team, they'd have to have some multi home run games. They'd have to have eight multi home run games and in a home run or in the other ones or whatever. I don't know. I'm not doing the math that much. <laughs> That's just not a math pod. But yeah, 18, um, mul- 18 team multi homer games and seven single homer games would work. There's a shot. There's a shot. It's not a good one. No. Um, next one is team ERA over under four. This this line was set at a time where we didn't know what the heck was going to happen at the trade deadline, and we assumed they were going to go out and get a pitcher that a pitcher better than Mitch White. So we didn't know what they were going to do, if UC Kikuchi was going to finish the year, what they were going to do with Barrios, the whole story. Uh, and I don't know, remember what you said, but four seemed like a decent number. Yeah, and I believe, I believe at the time I went with the under uh, for a couple reasons. I mean, I. Oh no, he's frozen once again. I, I somewhat, I guess, wrongly was betting on. Hey man, what's up, man? Um, so I think at the time I took the, uh, I took the under, um, for a couple reasons. I was betting on some of the starters doing better. Uh, you know, I, I thought Kikuchi at least could rein it in a little bit. Instead, they, you know, he's not really in the rotation, but that's another way to help the ERA. Um, I definitely expected Barrios to bounce back a little bit. And I guess like recently that's come true. It didn't really come true for a while, but it is now, you know, he has dropped his ERA to a, a an impressive 4.99. Um, and, uh, you know, is starting to pitch better. And, And the main thing was, as you mentioned, you know, we didn't know what acquisitions were coming down, but I assumed some pretty big ones would happen. Now, they didn't bolster the bullpen. I mean, Anthony Bass has been an incredibly important arm for them. Um, So it like half came true. Um, But I was just kind of betting on that. What I was not betting on is Jordan Romano to be even better than he was in the first half of the season. Uh, Yeah, I know this doesn't look good with recent events but he has been really dynamite in the second half of the season and pitching more innings jimmy garcia to go full nuclear for like two months and not allow a run 
Uh, Simmer's still been good, and he's appeared in more games than anyone in Major League Baseball. So bullpen really carried me, I feel like, with some help from Barrios. Yeah. I didn't even know that Simber stat he has. That's crazy. Yeah. He's going to appear in like 81 games this year, <laughs> which would be Pretty nuts. nuts. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, the last one, or is there one after that? No, there's one after that. This one's so stupid. I even feel dumb yeah, saying I'm, it. I'm going to sound right so on this one. so dumb. Uh, this is a bad line. I got to say that again. It should have been seven and a half, but I said six and a half players with double digit home runs. And I uh, took the dumb. over. <laughs> Because five of them already had double-digit home runs at that point. And I think it was like Jansen sitting on nine and Tay Oscar, who was hurt, sitting on seven. Um, So, yeah, now Kirk has 13. He's the first guy. Vlad obviously has enough. He's the second guy. Bo obviously has enough. He's the third. Chapman has enough. He's the fourth. Springer has enough. He's the fifth. Tay Oscar is the sixth with 20 homers now, and Jansen has 13. He is the seventh. Interesting, there is a shot for an eighth guy to get there. Uh, probably not going to happen, but Santiago Espinal is sitting on seven. So, this is true. Never know. Never know. Imagine Ryan he helps six. them get to that 23 home runs in the month. He just surges. What? You know, that would be wild. He and Vlad, basically, if Vlad goes on a homer spree, I'll hit like all of my bets. Um, true. But. If Espinal does, I'll hit most of my bets and feel happy about it. Okay, the the last one is Jay's team over under 90 and a half wins. I believe I had the over on this one. Still like super up in the air. Um, do you have their pace up right now? I can get it quickly if, if not, but it's... Uh, I do it's, not. It's like 90 or 91. I can tell you that. <laughs> it's... It's pretty yeah, close. 83 wins right now. I mean, I, I think they could get seven in 18 games totally. Um yeah. I mean they're on a they're on a pace, let's see, to win they're on a pace to win 91 and a half right now. Uh pretty up in the air. They won 91 last year. Um, and I think my main bet was just that they'd at least improve by a game over last season. Uh, and that they hadn't really played all that well, even up to the All Star break. They had had some stretches, and they were still doing pretty well. So, um, I mean, I'll trust in John Schneider. He has delivered by managing this team to like 17 games above 500 in the 60 game stretch. Schneider, man, 37 and 22 since he took over. He's done a good job. Can't say he hasn't. No, yeah, that guy is. Doing very well, and uh, the Blue Jays have benefited from it as they get ready for a series against the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, if you want to benefit from something, listen to these ads. Bang. But not the video listeners or watchers. Phil- oh, he's Phillies gone time. again. All right, now um, he's back. Phillies time. Uh, um, <laughs> let's roll into this is my internet crumbles um so blue jays going on the road starting tomorrow uh two games set at philly only non-divisional games left i believe that's correct yeah i think it's correct um after that they go tampa yankees boston and orioles one nice little tour around the al east um, the Phillies are obviously also a formidable baseball team. They are in a playoff spot as the second wild card uh, in the National League. They got some dudes, uh, including some dudes coming back, and they didn't send everyone to Toronto when they played against the Blue Jays, which was the John Schneider debut was game two of the sure. Phillies series. Uh, second two game set because they're our natural rival. Um, because there's such a big rival with the Phillies or rivalry with the Phillies, but um, I'll kick it over to you, my guy. What's uh, what's scaring you over there? This is a Phillies team, man, that has a lot of power. Dave Dombrowski in the offseason was like, Fielding, who needs that? I'll take Castellanos, I'll take Schwarber. Castellanos has been like awful. Like, really, truly awful. He's on the 10-day IL. Can't pick him. 
Schwarber's been pretty good, and he is second in the MLB in homers. He's got 39. Uh, he's been cranking tanks, but his average – he's, like, really having, like, a, a, a Gallo classic. Year. I was about to say he's having, like, a the best year Gallo could have. Um, he's hit 39 home runs. He's hitting 213. Like, he strikes out a ton, but, you know. Uh, I didn't get to do this last time since he was injured, but I'm going Bryce. He's my uh, he's my scary dude. Uh, yeah. I want to watch Bryce Harper play baseball. I think a lot of people hate Bryce Harper. I love watching Bryce Harper just crank home runs, so I pick Bryce Harper. Oh, I love Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper's my guy. Um, That's your guy? Wow. You it's one of my guys. Him. It's one of my guys. He's not Jonathan Papelbon's guy. We learned that the hard way, but he's he's <laughs> my guy. Um, good pick. Uh, good news for the Blue Jays is Bryce has has struggled a little bit off the uh, the IL where he had his two month broken hand stand. But the bad news is he's Bryce Harper, so that's going to be uh, definitely a problem. I'm going to go for one of his high paid uh, teammates, another guy who was here before they decided to abandon defense, because this guy's actually pretty good at defense, but he's also good with the stick. It's catcher JT Real Muto. Um, he's having a, a very nice month of September. Typically, a guy where you're like, wow, he could hit for the highest batting average of any catcher in baseball. Not hitting for a high average in September, only hitting 240, but he's got a team leading five home runs in the month. Um, which has helped him to a 905 OPS. He's just having a phenomenal season, too, to be honest. Like just another year where he's a catcher with an 800 OPS. Uh, he's one homer away from a 20 homer season. His 78 RBIs are five off the most he's ever had in his career. Like when Bryce went down, he kind of stepped up in a pretty big way. Uh, and he's still rocking it now that Bryce is back. So JT Romuto, uh, tough customer, I would say. Tough customer. I like that. That's a that's good analysis from you. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm looking at a guy for my hype train that is just a born leader, and he's only played the Phillies three times in his career. He's got pretty good numbers against everybody he's ever faced. Uh, doesn't have good numbers against the Phillies, and guess what? He wants to change that, okay? I'm talking about George Springer. This guy is fantastic. We've got a viral clip about uh, of him going around now where he's, like, touching second base. Everybody loves that. They're just, like, acting like they're just finding out about George Springer. Dude's sick. Everybody loves him. He's just goatly. Uh, Got to love Springer here. Veteran in interleague is, like, peanut butter and jelly. Uh, I'll take George. Nice pick. Nice pick. Uh, I'm going to go with a veteran guy who everyone looks to in the clubhouse. Some describe him as a father figure. Uh, others say that he is the man they look to in a time of need. It's Rymel Tapia. Uh, Rymel Tapia is going to be my pick uh, because he has played the Phillies a lot. <laughs> I threw you off there, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> who's, who, who's ever called him a father figure? Does he have kids? Maybe them. He didn't react at all to that. I really I did. I, I was totally shocked. I was like, maybe up. he knows something I don't. Like, no, what? no, I'm just messing. Um, I tried to memorize what you said about Springer, and then I forgot. So I just <laughs> started improvising. Um, Tapia has played the Phillies as much as anyone on this team because he was in the National League. Uh, and in 17 games against the Phillies, he's hitting 311 with a 926 OPS. Not too shabby for. Uh oh. Uh, Rymel, who also has hit two home Ola, yeah, um, he's hit two home runs off the Phillies. Unfortunately, his numbers at Citizens Bank not phenomenal, but maybe going back to another National League foe, Rymel can put up some big numbers like he used to do in the National League a lot. So that's what I'm counting on. I think we both have done that a couple times this year, where they're playing a National League team, and like Rymel's going to show them what's up. This is Rymel's time to shine. But he's got the numbers now. The numbies back him up. <laughs> I think we did him for the other Philly series too. We, I hope he, I hope he comes through for you though. I do too. We shall see. Coming up tomorrow, um, and uh, there may not be an episode tomorrow, but there will be one on Wednesday. So appreciate you listening today. Now make your second listen to Locked On MLB podcast. 
Paul Francis Sullivan can juggle. He can swallow swords. He can breathe fire. And he'll also talk about all 32 Major League Baseball teams. Check that out on the Locked On Podcast Network, wherever you get your podcasts. He is Matt Bonaparte. I am Ben Shulman. We will catch you later on Locked On Blue Jays.